Hello everyone! In this video, we are going to have a look at how to transfer directly your program from Visual Components Premium with the KUKA SIM add-on uh, to a real robot or, in my case, an Office Lite instance. So again, we are going to go to the File tab, have a look at our options, go to the add-on and here verify that our KUKA.SIM add-on is activated. In the general options, I will change the controller version to a 8.74 because my Office Lite version is also running on the 8.74. Uh, you have to make sure that if you use a real robot, it has to be the same controller version here. And then click on OK. And I will again go to my components, scroll down to my KUKA robots, go KUKA folder, go to the robots, and then here check out my KR120 and it will generate me the robot in the origin of my simulation and now I can go to the robot, the program tab and here I already have my home position so this is uh, nice from here on I will just create a dummy program I will maybe use the tool data one I will move the tool data one a little bit to the front and to the side so that we have a, a difference here to the flange of the robot. If I go to here my parent view, maybe I might take 190 millimeters in Y and in Z 365. And with that, I can also add a load, maybe 50 kilograms. And this is my tool data one. I will now select the tool data two, which will be on the left side of my robot somewhere like that and add a payload of maybe 60 kilograms and then I will add in the jog menu go to my base select the base data one and to the configuration and here again I'm just going to place it here 1000 millimeters in X and minus 1000 millimeters in Y and this will be my current configuration. If I go back to jog, I will now select my tool data one and my base data one, and I will move the robot to the left a little bit, create a new PTP movement between my home positions. Then from here on, I will go down a little bit and select my tool data two to program that point, maybe something like that. Linear movement and then go to the left side and now select my base null and my tool data number two and create another PTP movement like that. So if I play it now with the RCS module and generate the machine data, it will just move accordingly in my simulation world. First point, second point, third point. And now that this is done, I will need to save this configuration. So I will go to File, then Save As, and here Browse, and I will just call it Transfer to Real Robot. And once this is done, I will go back to my home tab and I can find this transfer configuration onto controller button in the configuration group. And this is the button that I will use for Office Lite. You might not use that for your real robot because there is already a configuration on that robot. In this case, I'm just going to click on that button and I will now go to the three little points and look for my real robots or office light. You can refresh the cell tree here with this little icon and I will directly find my KRC5 cabinet, which is my office light instance. I will show you it in a second. So this is my office light instance. This is already running and thus it can be found here in my cell tree. If you're connected to a real robot via an Ethernet cable or something similar, or if your robot is online and is 
reachable through your in internet connection, you will also find it via an IP address here. Select this KRC5 cabinet and click on OK. And now it also finds me the IP address from this cabinet. And now it looks very similar to the work visual process. So I can go through these, these steps. So I will go to the next step. It will ask me if there, I want to resolve conflicts and it will automatically complete the missing data. I agree to that. Save some things on my uh, current controller. Then it will prepare the code generation. And then it will deploy the project and click next. It will ask me to change my user to expert. So I will do that in my office light. And this will be the same on your real controller. You have to go to your user, select at least expert or higher, enter your password and then try again. So if I click finish here, I will need to do this again. So I will do the fast track and click on finish directly. It will do the same process, but automatically. And if I look at my office light image at the same time, it will ask me if I want to activate this project. And I will just say yes in this case. Now it installs the project and asks me what I want to change or add. And I will just say yes, continue. And now it will overwrite all my tool and base configuration that I had on this controller before. In KUKA SIM, it will say ready for activation. And I can, and once it's activated, I can click on finish. And in my office light view, there's this reconfiguration, which is still in process. And now I have the situation that my current configuration from KUKA SIM is on the robot. So if I go, to my robot settings and go to the startup and go to the tool and base management. I will find my tool data that I configured. I can also go to my bases and find these that have been configured. And now the beauty is that I can synchronize those two systems. So if I go back to visual components instance, and go to my program tab, click on the robot and go to the component properties. When I go to this KRL executor here, I'm currently in the motion RCS. Check out the other video to understand what RCS means. But here I can go to the drop down menu and actually select this controller. As our device already connected, it will automatically find the right address. If it doesn't, you can go to the three points and find the same settings as we did before. I will just click cancel here. And you will see here in the status that it's already connected. And also here on the lower side of the window, successfully connected to target controller. So I'm actually good to go to reset my simulation here and click on play. And so, it will automatically ask if I want to transfer changes here. It will ask me to overwrite the config data and the option data. I can actually select, deselect or select everything with this lower thing. In this case, maybe I want to overwrite it. If you have a real controller, you might not want to do this. So you will deselect that and press OK again. And then it will initialize the controller and on the other side, it will automatically start here a BCO. So it will actually move the robot. And if we now change a little bit the layout of my windows, as such as I can see the robot on the left side and on the right side at the same time, the robot is running here in my office light and it will automatically be synchronized here to my robot on the left side. In this case, I'm running this in T1, so kind of slow. And if I pause the robot here, it will automatically synchronize it here in my window. So also here I can go to my R and say reset program. And then in my program view, 
I can now actually press and play here again. It will do this PCO. And now I can either jog the robot through my controller. So this will be the same on your real robot. So if I move axis one, you will move that the robot moves accordingly in KUKA Sim and the real world. I will just increase the speed a little bit so we can see it better. If I kind of move here in T1, it works. If I move axis two, I can also switch to some other word coordinate system and move in X up and, and or in Z up and down. So he's currently in a singularity, so it takes a moment, but I can actually jog the robot now. And in addition to that, I can run the program again. So if I click here on play, it will do the BCO run again to my home position and start with the little program that I uh, generated at fr up front. So if I deselect it here, the play button again and click again on it, it will start again the program and move in reality and in visual components with a KUKA.sim add-on, just synchronized. I have the option if I stop the program here and go to reset program and also reset the simulation here. I have the option to go to view only in the motion execution options here. If I go to view only and press play in the simulation, it will not be synchronized. So it will be a one-way connection between my KUKA my KUKA controller to a visualization in KUKA Sim. So let's try again if it works. And now it actually, the master is the office light controller, and in your case, the real controller, and the slave is kind of the simulation in visual components. So if I press stop here, the robot will stop. If I jog the robot around, it will just kind of show what is happening um, and not synchronize it, the, the, the program execution anymore. I will now reset the program and now it's and reset the simulation here. Be aware that if you want to save a current layout, you might need to reset to the RCS mode here. And you have some new once the controller is connected, you have some new options. You can actually shift program from one side to the other. So if I do now a change here in my point one and move it ar around and say touch up, maybe add a new point, a point number four up here and say new point four at the end of my program. I can now go to the Scara L program and once I'm connected, so let me do this real quick, there's a shortcut, you don't have to go to the component properties, but you can also go here to this little um, simulation configuration and it will directly get you to this motion execution mode. And if you go to the controller and it will connect again, not in view only, but in synchronized, you have two new options here. You can either load an active program from the controller or load this program onto the robot controller. So if I click here, it will ask me which program or which um, program will I synchronize. I just select here both of them, overwrite, I say yes. And now it will actually ask me, do you want to allow the remote access? I say yes and it will automatically push the new program onto my robot. And as well, I can get this program back with the other two options that I have here. Now I can revoke this connection and you will find this point number four here and the adapted point number one in on the real robot controller. I hope this was helpful and I hope that you liked this introduction into the connection to your real robot. Make sure if you go back 
to saving this layout, you go back to this RCS motion execution mode. So it will not directly con try to connect to a robot once you press on play. And then you can again save the layout file, save with the new program, and you will be able to connect to a real controller anytime. Thanks for watching and see you soon in the next video.